Welcome to Art Explained, the home of art, art history, stories, and art education for all who are interested. Jean-Honoré Fragonard was a French painter and printmaker whose late Rococo style was distinguished by remarkable exuberance and hedonism. Fragonard is considered one of the most prolific artists active during the last decades of the Ancien Régime. He produced more than 550 paintings, of which only five are dated. Among his most popular works are genre paintings conveying an atmosphere of intimacy and veiled eroticism. He was born on April 5, 1732, in Grasse, Alpes-Maritimes. He was the son of François Fragonard, a glover, and Françoise Petit. Fragonard was articled to a Paris notary when his father's circumstances became strained through unsuccessful speculations. However, he showed such talent and inclination for art that he was taken at the age of 18 to François Boucher. Boucher recognized the youth's rare gifts, but he was disinclined to waste his time with one so inexperienced. So he sent Fragonard to Chardin's atelier. Fragonard studied for six months under the great luminist, after which he went back to study under Boucher, as he now had gained enough training and experience. Fragonard soon acquired Boucher's style so completely that the master entrusted him with the execution of replicas of his paintings. Though not yet a student of the Academy, Fragonard gained the Prix de Rome in 1752 with the painting Jeroboam Sacrificing to Idols. But before proceeding to Rome, he continued to study for three years under Charles André Van Loo. In the year preceding his departure, he painted Christ Washing the Feet of the Apostles, now on exhibition at Grasse Cathedral. On September 17, 1756, he settled in at the French Academy in Rome, then presided over by Charles Joseph Nartois. While at Rome, Fragonard became friends with a fellow painter, Hubert Robert, in 1760, they toured Italy together, executing numerous sketches of the local scenery. It was in these romantic gardens with their fountains, grottos, temples, and terraces that Fragonard conceived the dreams which he was subsequently to render in his art. He also learned to admire the masters of the Dutch and Flemish schools, Rubens, Franz Hals, Rembrandt, Ruzdael, imitating their loose and vigorous brush strokes. Added to this influence was the deep impression made upon his mind by the fluid sumptuousness of Giovanni Battista Tipolo, whose works he had an opportunity to study in Venice before he returned to Paris in 1761. In 1765, he secured his admission to the academy. Fragonard wavered between religious, classical, and other subjects, but later the demand of the wealthy art patrons of Louis XV's pleasure-loving and licentious court turned him definitely towards those scenes of love and voluptuousness for which his name will always be associated. These scenes are only made acceptable by the tender beauty of his color and the virtuosity of his facile brushwork. The Swing is one of Fragonard's best-known works, a somewhat risque composition depicting the mistress of the Baron de Saint-Julien. This young girl, positioned at the composition center, appears on a swing wearing a pink dress. She is pushed by a smiling man who does not realize another man is in the shrubs looking up her skirt. She, however, 
appears to have engineered the scene, looking down at him as she moves through the air. The scene is set against an unruly forest, crowded with statues alongside people and plants. The girl's outstretched foot, from which a slipper flies, points at the most prominent sculpture, recognizable to viewers as Etienne Maurice Falconet's menacing Cupid. His work had an influence on many contemporary imitators and competitors. None of these painters achieved the same level of virtuosity as Fragonard himself, and their names have generally been forgotten. Fragonard's influence, due to the French Revolution's radical reshaping of taste, skipped two generations, with interest in his work resurging after Edmond and Jules de Goncourt. Fragonard's work became popular quickly, resulting in the rediscovery of the Progress of Love series, forgotten in Grasse. His application of paint with its attention to light and reliance on quick, expressive brush strokes had a strong influence on the Impressionists, particularly Bert Marceau and Pierre-Auguste Renoir, and a lineage can be traced from his work through to the abstract. He died on August 22, 1806, at the age of 74, in Paris, France. Thank you so much for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for sharing with friends, and thank you for subscribing. It means the world to us. This is not the end of the video. We have more to share. Keep watching and enjoy yourself. See you in the following video. Thank you.